Range Day Podcast. Let's talk about it. Okay, so while this is kind of impromptu, my wife and I really do like just talking about random topics and for whatever reason recording them. We tend to have a blast while doing it and we were thinking, actually it was her suggestion, why not turn it into a podcast? So I actually start thinking about it and it's actually easier to put together than what we're doing now. She has her own channel, I have my own channel, so we thought about it and we're like, why not? So you heard it here first, the Range Day podcast. So basically what we'll do is every Range Day, we'll pick a somewhat related gun topic and we'll just go over it and you'll get to hear my opinion or my side of it and you'll also get to hear hers. I think it'll actually be pretty cool, one side coming from me and then one side coming from her and she's a little bit newer to the gun industry than I am. So come to think of it, this is a really good way to hold myself and my wife accountable to actually training. So that's probably the biggest plus of it. So just remember the date, don't try to copy us. The Range Day podcast, July 16th, 2020. We started it. I don't really think we're going to start off with episodes, but we're going to start off with little clips here and there about different subjects that we talk about, and we'll just post it up to YouTube and see what happens. So if you like this first test, go ahead and subscribe. And at the end of the day, it's just something for you guys to listen to and see our range day footage. If it ends up doing really well, we'll just go ahead and schedule it and make it a regular thing. So that's enough talking. The first topic, the PPQ versus the MMP2. So. Let's go ahead and start with the ergonomics and we'll both give our uh, sides on the ergos and we can go from there. Uh, how do you feel the ergonomics compare on these two guns? Your PPQ has more of a meaty feel. In my hands, it's just more like, more stuff. Define meaty. It's more stuff to grab onto. <laughs> <laughs> okay, versus the m and um, I do like the rough texture. texture on the grip. All right, but, but yeah. it, it, how does it actually, like, do you feel like the MMP contours to your hand? Yeah. Okay, well, that's probably, I guess, the uh, difference with me. I feel like the MMP grip does not contour nearly as much as the PPQ. It's more than definitely more than like a, a Glock, but it's it still doesn't really form to your hand what you'll hear a lot of people say about the ppq is it feels like it was meant for your hand which i mean it's hard to pick one up and not feel that everybody i've ever had shoot my ppq says the same thing um so yeah that, that that's what that's how i feel about it i feel like the mmp isn't bad by any standard the ppq is just it was made for the ergos all right so let's go to the next question probably the question everybody uh, wants to know is how is the recoil impulse on these two guns the ppq is known for having a quote-unquote snappy recoil impulse due to a higher bore axis whereas the mmp 2.0 is known for being one of the softest shooting guns uh, very low bore axis so did you feel any difference today shooting them both back to back a uh, slight difference but not too much. Wow, slight difference, not too much. That's crazy. Uh, I hope the footage shows that. <laughs> <laughs> nah, nah, nah. Okay. No, all right. <clears throat> so my thing is, from my point of view, and I'm gonna try to say this in the nicest way possible, uh, a severely low bore axis is probably not the first thing you should be looking for in a firearm. There's so many more important things. Uh, for one, the most important thing, which unanimously should be reliability followed by obviously accuracy, but every modern day striker fire gun is gonna be accurate, more accurate than the user. The next I would say, I mean, you can go for ergos, if that's the case, but I really do feel trigger is important. So bore axis, it's one of those things that falls down by the wayside. And the reason why is because it can be overcome with, with what babe? Practice. Exactly. Know how to shoot. Yeah, it can be overcome with practice. Uh, I tend to shoot a PPQ pretty flat. I'm not the best in the world, but I, I think I obviously shoot it decent to the point where I don't notice the difference between myself shooting the MMP and the PPQ. I honestly don't. I may somewhat. If I go from the MMP to the PPQ, I don't notice the difference. If I go through the PPQ to the MMP and I'm thinking about it, I'm like, yeah, there's a difference. There's going to be a difference. Absolutely. Yeah, of course I'm going to feel a difference. Just randomly picking them up, I don't notice any difference. You said pretty much the same with you? Yeah. Agreed. Okay. 
Alrighty. So next question. How do you feel about the overall triggers on these two guns? How do they compare? The PPQ definitely has a better trigger. Why do you say that? Getting to the wall is smoother than the, the MMP. Some people say the MMP trigger is the best trigger out there. No. <laughs> <laughs> Are you sure? You, you can't say that. You, you know how many people are going to like have a riot? I'm going to get so many dislikes. That's fine. <laughs> it's <not. laughs> no, it's not. You, uh, okay. still you still watch this channel. Okay, okay, okay. All right, let me, let me, let me, let me try to explain. Um, oh. <sighs> Striker fire triggers. Uh, all right. Apart from like the 1911 uh, handguns, let's say as far as striker fired, uh, triggers go polymer striker fired triggers go the ppq is in my eyes king the canix or janik is probably up there right there with it uh the vp9 has an amazing trigger too the uh cz p10c also has an amazing trigger i don't know how you quite put an MMP 2.0 trigger over any of those. It, 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 mm. <laughs> we have what, the core performance uh, edition? Yeah. And yeah, it, it, it doesn't, it just doesn't, it, it's not in the same ball field. The wall is more defined, the reset is more defined, the it take up is 10 times smoother. It feels stiff. It feels stiff? Mm hmm. And then here, here's the thing, you can train through any handgun, it could be a horrible trigger and you could train to shoot it properly, but when it comes to the trigger and something so important, like building good fundamentals with, you know, trigger control, it's kind of, you, you, you want to start off with something good or something decent, so that, that's kind of my take upon that. You kind of agree? Yeah, but I still like my gun. No, no, and I'm not, that's, that's, that's one thing that I want to make clear. This gun would have not been purchased if it wasn't a great, not even a good, a great gun, okay? There's just little things that, you know, certain guns do better. I'm not saying the triggers, there's ten, there, there's hundreds of triggers worse than the MMP 2.0 trigger. Uh, but if, if you're comparing it in like the top five or top ten higher echelon of striker fire fired guns, you yeah, it's not there yet. But does that make it a bad trigger? Absolutely not. Fair enough? All right. All right, so really quick, guys, just want to go ahead and throw this into the video. I'm not sure who really needs to hear this, but I just wanted to reiterate that my wife and I both really love these two guns. This is the MNP Core 2.0 Pro Edition. Comes cut for the red dot. And this is my custom PPQ Q4 Tactical Edition. Now something I want you guys to know about these two guns, there is a reason why we purchased them. Of course, we both have our preferences and there are certain features on each that we both either may love on one and hate on the other or vice versa. That does not make it a bad gun. That just means that there is always room for improvement. A quick example would be, I've said it multiple times, I do not like the overall grip texture on the PPQ out of the box. That's my opinion, it's okay. Whereas on the MNP 2.0, it is amazing out of the box. Like this finer grain stippling is even better than the stippling that I did as far as grip. On the MMP side, for me personally, I hate where the slide release is and how it's actually formed. Because for my hands, I like to get really high up and it digs in. I mean, it eats away at my pump swell right there. That just doesn't work for me on that. Whereas on the PPQ, it's smooth and it doesn't bother me whatsoever. My carry, my wife's carry. It's okay to prefer one over the other. Both are absolutely reliable. At the end of the day, just pick one, practice, be safe, and have fun. So there you have it. Like I said, if you like this idea for our Range Day podcast, Go ahead and subscribe to us. That way, when we do put out another one, you could stay in tune with the schedule and you won't miss a thing. Please remember to like, comment, and subscribe. I'll see you guys in the next one.